السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد ونصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الناس اتقوا ربکم ان زلزلت الساعت شیعن عظیم صدق اللہ العظیم Respected, honorable, ulama ikram, elders, brothers, mothers and sisters listening. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to be in this gathering in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِّن بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَذَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَّلَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَ that whenever a group of people assemble, congregate, converge in the house, from the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. the masjid, then what happens is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends his tranquility. When they sit down to listen to the recitation, we just heard the beautiful recitation of our colleague here and we are going to be inshallah ta'ala listening to the words of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever this kind of gathering takes place, and we need to understand the importance and the significance of this gathering. Nowadays, we'll go to every other gathering other than the gathering which takes place in the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We will be in a wedding from 12 o'clock, midday till 4, 5 o'clock, just for a plate of rice. This is our mentality. So when it comes to deen, we are far away. So when this kind of gathering happens, illa nazalat alayhimu sakina, sakina, tranquility descends on that gathering. Wa ghashiyatumu rahma, Allah's mercy envelopes and shrouds that gathering. Wa haffatumu malaika, the angels will be there. And wa dhakarahumu Allah fi mana'inda, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about them in the malai a'la, in the heavens up in the seven heavens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discussed that with the noble angels the point here is alhamdulillah we are in this kind of gathering and what's the purpose we have these kind of programs to remind us remind because reminder gives the benefit to the believers when we hear the narratives of the previous nations of, from the Quran and the Hadith, they are an ibra, they are a lesson for us, eye-opener for each and every one of us. So the purpose of us coming here is not just to spend an hour here and then go home. No, no, we need to take a lesson. Me, you, every one of us listening, we need to make sure that we get up from here with the firm commitment that we are going to be fulfilling and complying and acting upon practicing on whatever we learn whether it's myself or there is yourself so each and every one because this life that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us there's a purpose behind it does mankind think that he has been created futile do you think that we have created you futile meaningless without a reason without a purpose allah's telling you and me and that you will not be returning to us every one of us will have to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day we have to answer to everything this life is very short my brothers my sisters this life how short it is subhanallah do you know on the day of judgment when we will all be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you and me from the time of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salatu wasalam till the last man on earth every one of us will be there one particular question which Allah is going to be asking us Kam labithtum fil ardi adada sinin. how long did you stay in this world in terms of years adada sinin. in terms of years how long did you stay people on that day they will be drowned in their own sweat in the hadith he mentions some people they will be the sweat will be up to the ankles some up to the waist some up to the collarbone some up to the earlobe some will be completely overwhelmed by the sweat the perspiration that situation the hadith says innakum tuhsharuna yawm alqiyamati hufatan uratan ghurlan you will be gathered on that day hufatan barefoot uratan naked Ghurlan, uncircumcised. 
When our beloved mother Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she heard this from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, people are going to be naked. Are, not, are they not going to be embarrassed and ashamed of themselves? Because of, oh my beloved Aisha, people, matter will be worse than that. Likullim ri'im minuhum yawma idin sha'nu yugni. Everybody will be drowned in their own state of worry. The Quran says that in the zalzala tasaati shayun alzim, the zalzala, the quake of that day will be very severe thing. Yawma tarawna ha tadhalu kullu murdiatin amma arudat. Watadau kullu thati hamlin hamlaha. Watarad nas sukara. Wama hum bi sukara walakinna adab Allah yishadid. On that day, a person, a breastfeeding mother, will abandon that child. That child was so beloved to that mother than her own life. She will abandon that child. And what will happen is a pregnant woman, she will abort that child out of fear. What are nasa sukara? You will see the people in the state of intoxication. And the Quran says, Wama hum bi sukara. In reality, they are not intoxicated, they are sober. They are in a good state. But the punishment of Allah will be very severe. That will be the situation of that day. So my brothers, my sisters, the point here is when Allah is going to ask that question, everybody is going to be so worried and so horrified and they will be whispering. The Quran says, يَتَخَافَتُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا بِثْتُمْ إِلَّا عَشْرًا يَتَخَافَتُونَ تَخَافَتَ يَتَخَافَتُونَ تَابِ تَفَاعُلْ Those who understand Arabic, they will be whispering to each other. And they will be saying, what is Allah talking about? Yes? No, no, no. We only stayed in this world for how long? Ten days. This life, my brothers, my sisters, we're thinking to ourselves, we've got a very long life. Huh? We, I'm 30 years old. What is talking about ten days? When we're going to be comparing and we're going to be sitting, seeing that severity, the gravity of that day, we'll say we only lived in this world for ten days. How long? Ten days. Another group of people will say ten days. That's too much. We didn't stay for 10 days in this world. نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ إِذْ يَقُولُ أَمْثَلُهُمْ طَرِيقَةً إِلَّا بِثْتُمْ إِلَّا يَوْمَ Do you know those who are the intellectuals, the clever ones, the genius ones, they will say 10 days is too much. إِلَّا بِثْتُمْ إِلَّا يَوْمَ We only lived for one day. We only lived for one day. Allahu Akbar. Another group of people will say one day is too much. One day. It's too much. 24 hours? We didn't stay in this world for 24 hours. They will say we only live for one morning or one evening. Not even 24 hours. And we are alhaakum muttakathuru hatta zurdumul maqabir. We you know, competing with each other until we reach our grave will be completely oblivious. This is what we're doing in this world. Another group will go even further. They'll say one morning, one evening is too much. We didn't live that much. The mujrim, the criminals, they will take qasam, they will take oath, and they will say we only live for one hour. The sa'a lamahatun qalila, very small amount of time, which we translate sa'a as one hour. My brother, this is how long is our life. We have to. Do or die, make or break, we have to do something in this world. We can't just waste it. As I said, there's a purpose behind it. Allah has created us for a purpose. Allah Jalaluddin Suyutu Rahmatullah in Tafsir Jalal said, Illa liya'rifu. So we recognize Allah so we can worship Allah and fulfill our objective. That we are on a journey. You know, our journey started from Alam Arwah. Alam means the world. Arwah souls. So we were in the alam arwa, the world of souls before we came into this world. Every one of us were there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a promise from us, a pledge, a covenant. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ زُهُورِهِمْ ذُرْوِيَّتَهُمْ أَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ Every soul was extracted and they were put on the plains of Arafat and Allah addressed you and me. We were all there. Every soul, every ruh, in the hadith he mentions like small ants, everybody was scattered on the plains of Arafat. And Allah asked you and me, Alastu bi Rabbikum, am I not your creator, nourisher, sustainer? Each and every one of us said bala. The word Arabic word for bala means surely, lo and behold, without a doubt, you are our Lord. Every one of us, we said that. That was in Alam Arwa. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then from Alam Arwa, we came to our second leg of our journey, which is the Alam Dunya. This is Alam Dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَىٰ يَفَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us. He didn't leave us in the dark. He sent prophets after prophets, messenger after messenger, nearly 124,000 messengers and prophets to remind us the purpose of life. أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُ That worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no deity other than him. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Indeed, those people who said Rabbun Allah, Rabbun Allah referring to the Alam Arwah, the world of souls. Then, Thumma Staqam, when we came into this world, did we stay steadfast? Did we have istiqamat or not? If we had, we kept our promise that we kept, we did to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Alam Arwah, then we continued. Then there's glad tidings. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبَشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُمْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Then we have glad tidings in this world. At the time we're leaving this world, departing from this, and then from the journey onwards till we enter paradise. Will be angels escorting us throughout the journey. So our second leg of our journey is the alam dunya alam dunya Then from there we go to alam barzakh That's the life of the grave. So a person who leaves this world, like the Quran says, Hatta idha jaa ahadahumul al-maut qala rabbil ji'un. When death approaches each and every one of us, at that time a person will regret and say, rabbil ji'un. Allah return me back to alam dunya Because he's going to go towards alam barzakh So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla. Kalla means never. You're not going to come back now. Nobody comes back. Like in Arabic, they say, Laita shababa yaud. Wish my youth came back. Youth will never come back. So, a person needs to continue his journey. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. These are words that you're saying. You had that opportunity. My brother, we have got the opportunity now before it is too late. Wa min waraihim barzakhun ila yawmi yuba'athun. Now you need to continue your journey towards barzakh. Barzakh. Literally means a veil, partition between the dunya and the akhirah. That's our third leg of our journey. So, first what is it? Alam arwa, the first leg of our journey. I want you to memorize these particular words. So first leg, first part of our journey is alam arwa. Arwa is a plural of ruh. Ruh means soul, the world of souls. Then we come to alam dunya, that's the worldly life. Then from there we go to alam barzakh. Barzakh means the partition life, the grave life, which is between the dunya and the akhirah. Now, my brothers, we are all scattered in these three alams. Some of our siblings are st still in alam e arwa, they're waiting to come here, the waiting room. I call it the waiting room. They're all waiting there. They're fascinated. What is this dunya going to be about? They all, then they come into the mother's womb for nine, ten months, and they come into the dunya. So then, alam e dunya, from there we go to alam e barzakh. Many of our parents have already reached alam e barzakh. Many of our brothers, siblings, many of our loved ones, friends, in the COVID, many have reached the Alam Barzakh. So we are all scattered in these three Alams. But, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسُلُونَ When the Sur will be blown, the trumpet, the bugle, by Israfil alayhi salatu wasalam, no one will remain in Alam Arwa, no one will remain in Alam Dunya, no one will remain in Alam Barzakh. We'll have to go to a fourth leg and final leg of our journey, which is the Alam Akhirat, the life of the Akhirat. That one day, the first day of that Akhirat, the fourth leg of our journey, the Quran says, Kana miqdaruhu khamsina al fasana. That one day, the duration of that one day will be 50,000 years long. That's why when they will be comparing that we only lived for one hour, that's true. It's even less than that, basically. If you compare it with that one day of 50,000 years, this life, even if you get 70, it's not even one hour. Allahu Akbar. So, the point here is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us in this world for this purpose. We are going to be returning back. We have to return back. Do you know the Quran is so beautiful? We need to understand the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fajr, in the 30th Jews, He says, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Or the nafsa mutma'inna, the content nafs, the happy soul. Irji'i, 
The word irji'i from the word raja'a yarji'u means to return. He didn't say izhabi go. He said return. So what does the word return mean? That we were already there. Allah saying get go towards Jannah. So our parent, our father, Adam and our mother, Hawa, they both were in Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, now you came into this world, you passed your test, you are the happy nafs, you are the content nafs, now you can go back to your father's inheritance, which is Jannah. Subhanallah. The word has been used, irji'i, not izhabi. But you're going back. You just come for test here, one hour. And one hour, make sure that you do things properly. And this is becoming a very big challenge. As time approaches to the day of judgment, it's not going to get better. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get even more challenging. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, one of the prophets says, يَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ الزَّمَانِ أَصَّابِرُ فِيهِمْ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِذِ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ A time will come upon the people, a person who's trying to persevere, be steadfast on the deen, is like holding hot cinder, charcoal embers on his hand that is going to be so hard like a person cannot hold charcoal or any anything which is hot on his hand for even few seconds that's going to be how it, a person is going to feel when he's trying to practice deen this is what's going to happen a person will be so depressed under the hadith the prophet gives a prophecy فَيَتَمَرَّغُ عَلَيْهِ وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي مَكَانَ صَاحِبِ هَذَا الْقَبْرِ وَلَيْسَ بِهِ الدِّينُ إِلَّا الْبَلَىٰ That the Prophet ﷺ is taking an oath that by the one in whose hands my life is, the dunya, the world will not come to an end until a person passes by a grave. Then he will pass by that grave and then فَيَتَمَرَّغُ عَلَيْهِ He will sit on that grave and he'll turn himself on that grave. He'll be so restless, turning on that grave. And he will say, Ya laytani makana sahibi hadha al-qabr. I wish I was the occupant of this grave. I wish the person inside the grave, he was on top of the grave and I was under the grave. Why is he going to say this? وَلَيْسَ بِهِ الدِّينُ إِلَّا الْبَلَىٰ Only reason is because of the trials and tribulation he's facing. Because of the depression. Because of the depression that he's facing. So a person, like we see, suicide has increased in an alarming rate. One of the main cause of death is suicide because people are depressed. Like in Urdu they say, Aaj to, ab to gabra ke kehte hai mar jayenge, mar ke bhi chen na paaya to kidar jayenge. Allahu Akbar. Like, you know, in this COVID time, last two years, so many youngsters came to me. My office was still open at that time. And even the police officers were waiting. They said, you, you can continue with the office work. Because they knew that these people are suicidal. So they used to come very, subhanallah, brothers who have good jobs, uh, earning good money, healthy, wealthy. Put, Sheikh, I'm feeling suicidal. I want to commit suicide. I'm going to just come out of this office now. I'm going to drive my car into the wall. I'm going to kill myself. What? What are you talking about? I had a text message to 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Sheikh, uh, I'm going to commit suicide. So it was a sister. And she said, please, you know, my children, I want them to enroll in your institute and please perform my janaza. That was the text message I got at 3 o'clock. So this is the situation. This depression, subhanallah. Like in Urdu, subhanallah, like he says, Neen bhi kya ghazab ki cheez hai, a jaye to kuch cheeze bula deti hai, na a jaye to kuch cheeze yaad dilati hai. Those who understand Urdu, this is what is. Like insomnia is a medical term for a person who can't go to sleep. How beautifully Muhammad ibn Idris Ashrafi rahmatullah ta'ala says that, Sahirat uyunu wa namat a'yun. Fi umurin takunu aw la takun. Fadra il hamma anin nafs. He says, some eyes can't go to sleep. And others, they can't get up. Regarding matters, it might be this way, it might be the other way. You know, the prediction of the economist, you know, is telling you, you know, it's not, it's, going to be, it's not going to be so good. The cryptocurrency, you have put the money in. You don't know what's going to happen. All night, you're still staying awake. It might just go up, it might go down. What, what is going to happen? So this is the thing. Fi umurin takunu aw la takunu. So he says, Fadra il hamma an nafs. Take that worry away. Because the worry, I always say to my students, worry is complete waste of time. It doesn't take away your problems of tomorrow. It takes away the happiness of today. Just worrying for nothing. So this is the problem that we have. So overthinking is the most, the biggest factor of depression. Overworry. 
you know, let me just dive, divert here, just objectively. Reminds me of uh, Fir'aun, Pharaoh. So what happened was a soothsayer came to him and he said, You know, you ladu mauludun fi banu Israel, yadhabu mulkuka ala yadi. He comes in Qasasun Nabi al Juzu Sali by Shaykh Abul Hasan Ali Nadwi Rahimullah Ta'ala. Reminds me of my student days. So he says here that a child will be born in the Banu Israel and he will take your kingdom away. He will become the king. He will become the leader. So after, then after that, Shaykh Abul Hasan Ali Nadwi Rahmatullah Ali says, وَطَارَ نَوْمُ فِرْعَوْنَ Fir'aun sleep finished from that day. وَلَا يَتِيبُ لَهُ تَعَامٌ وَلَا شَرَابٌ No food, no drink was, you know, he was completely restless. The, uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is not even born yet. Do you know that worry? He's going to be born, he's going to get up to the age of 40, after that he's going to get the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then how many years? But even before that, subhanallah, everything's gone. You know, nowadays, just the worry, you know, a person, he's diagnosed with cancer, whatever, he's got that worry, the end of life now, subhanallah, he's seeing no happiness. But just that fear lurking in the mind that I've just given the blood test, it might be cancer. Just that fear, that's it, that gets a person into depression. That's the life we're living in. So the point I was saying here, this is the kind of situation that we're going through. And so what we need to make sure is faith. We have to make sure that we stay steadfast. How do we stay steadfast on our deen? The scholars, subhanallah, jazahumullahu anna khayl al jaza, they have spelt out everything for us. So alhamdulillah, we have to look at things in a positive way. You know, look at the glass as half full, not as half empty. Be positive, don't be negative. Be optimistic, don't be pessimistic. An optimistic person looks at and he, he takes out opportunities from difficulties. And a pessimistic person takes out difficulty from opportunity. I hope you're understanding this. Do you know, in the olden days, there was this shoe manufacturers. So they sent two of the reps towards the aborigines. So they told them to try to persuade them, try to convince them to buy shoes. So after some time, one person, he sent a telegram and he says, there's no chance here. They don't wear shoes, they're aborigines. The second one sent a telegram. He said, great opportunity here. They don't wear shoes. And otherwise, I'm going to make them wear shoes. Are you understanding, brothers? Being optimistic. Being positive thinkers. As a believer, we have to be always positive. We went through this... COVID, coronavirus, this situation, we have to always be a positive thinker. You know, a believer, he says there's two things, sabr and shukr. It's two sides of the same coin. If a person, as a believer, subhanAllah, we're always rewarded. Everything is for our benefit. If he's going through any kind of prosperity, he is grateful. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was the person who is grateful. And a person is going through adversity, he's patient, he's getting reward for his patience. Husband and wife, they were sitting near the bank of the river and suddenly the wife says to the husband, my darling husband, we're both in Jannah. We're both going to go in Jannah, both in paradise. How did you come to this conclusion, my dear darling wife? She goes, you know, you got a beautiful wife like me and you are grateful. So those who express gratitude, they will have Jannah. And I got an ugly husband like you. I do sabr. And people who do sabr, they'll go into Jannah. So whatever we are, either sabr or shukr is beneficial for us. It's going to be beneficial for us. So the point here is, life is going to have all these challenges. If you look at the lives of the pious people, the galaxy of V. Ikram, you'll see many of them. You see our beloved Prophet the life that he went through. Because they knew the problem is, we think this dunya is everything. This is deception. Our beloved Prophet he was poor, not because of desperation, out of choice. He was put forward for him, the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa put forward, for oh my beloved, I will transform the mountains of Tihama into gold and silver. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ politely declined. He said, oh Allah, I want to eat one day so I could be grateful. One day I will be hungry, I will be patient. 
So this was the thing. The Prophet Wasallam didn't want this dunya. He always wanted keep kept in mind the akhirah and this is what he wanted for ourselves as well. So each and every one of us, we need to keep this in mind that this life is short. How do we stay steadfast? So the first thing we need to do is, Hakim Ulum Mashaykh Ashwal Itani Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentions that how can we be steadfast on our deen? Because this is the critical situation that we are going through, the challenges and trials and tribulations that many of our brothers and sisters are leaving the deen. In the hadith he mentions, Satakunu Fitna. Fitna, trials and tribulations will come. Samma bakma amya. The trials and tribulations will make a person deaf, dumb, and blind. Yusbihu musliman wa yumsi kafira. In the morning, he'll be a believer. In the evening, he'll be a disbeliever. Wa yumsi musliman wa yusbihu kafira. In the evening, he was a believer. In the morning, he'll be a disbeliever. Why? Yabi'u deenahu bi'aradhim min ad dunya. He will sell his deen for the paltry things of the dunya. So how can we safeguard our iman? Because our iman is the biggest treasure. We can lose everything, but we can't lose our iman. So how do we safeguard and preserve our iman? Number one, we need to be grateful to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. The iman that he has given. Alhamdulillah, we are all faithful. We are all believers. We are all, we got iman, we got Islam. So the point here is whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we be grateful. We express our gratitude. We express our thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Quran tells us, la in shakartum, la azidannakum. If you are grateful, I will give you more. So we are grateful on our iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, wa qalu alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadi alawla an hadana Allah. That the pious people, they used to say, alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana. All praises be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has guided us towards this. Towards Iman. Allah, we would never be guided if you didn't guide us. So first thing, my brothers and sisters, is we need to express our gratitude for the Iman Allah has given. Look at the situation of the world. How many percent of the population, the 9 billion people on the surface of earth, how many of that percent of that 9 billion are Muslims? We are so lucky. We are so privileged. We are so honored. We should always express that <coughs> gratitude to Allah. Sayyidina Abdul Masood ta'ala anhu says, the hadith mentioned in Bukhari, that they used to, the Sahaba Ikram, they used to always call each other, Ijlis bina nu'minu sa'a. Ijlis bina. Let us sit down together. Let us talk about our iman. Allahu Akbar. We were just on the brink of falling. Wa kumtum ala shafa hufrati minan nar. Fa'ankadakum mina. We're just on the brink of falling into Jahannam through the blessing of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has saved us. Allahu Akbar. So they used to always sit down and they used to express the gratitude. This is what we need to do. We need to tell that to our parents. We need to tell that to our siblings. We need to tell that to our children. We need to tell that to our friends and neighbors and colleagues, everybody. Allahu Akbar. Bless the blessing of Iman. If you want to know the blessing and the value of Iman, we need to ask Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala. We need to ask Suhaib Rumi radiallahu ta'ala. We need to ask those people who went through all the different atrocities, all the different kind of torment by the disbelievers, by the enemies of Islam. But alhamdulillah, they stayed steadfast. Ahad, ahad, ahad. They valued that. We haven't valued it. We don't value it. Why? Because we got it very easily. We need to value. First thing is, value our Iman. Express our gratitude. Number one. Number two is, we need to keep on praying. The dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught in, in Surah Allah Imran, in the first ruku, Rabbana la tuziq qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma. Each and every one of us, we need to memorize this dua and we need to recite it, we need to read it, we need to supplicate with this after every salah, whenever we raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallah, la tuziq qulubana. Don't deviate us. After you have given us guidance, Allah, you have given us Iman, you have given us Islam, you have given us the best of all prophets as our role model. Allah, never ever take that away from us. Never snatch this away from us. Ba'da is hadaytana. Wahab lana min ladunka rahma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us your mercy. Do you know when we say, like many of us will say, Allah, show mercy. We read this dua, Allah, show mercy. Do you know when we say, show mercy, there's four things that we need to keep in mind. Because mercy, when we say Allah shows mercy, number one, we are saying to Allah, tawfiq etaat, give the ability to carry out good deeds. Allah show mercy because many a times, because of our sins, we get deprived from carrying out 
the good deeds. So by saying Allah show us mercy, we're saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us the ability to carry out good deeds. Number one, tawfiq ta'at. Ability to carry out obedience of Allah. Number two, farahi ma'ishat. Expansion in risk. Because of our sins, what happens is risk, sustenance is stopped. We're deprived of sustenance. In the rajul yuhramu risk with zambi yusibu. In the hadith it comes, a person is deprived from risk because of the sins that he commits. So when you say warhamna, Allah, don't deprive of, of the risk. Number three, behisab maghfirat. Allah without reckoning. Allah, if you take reckoning, if you take our accounts, we finish. Man nuqisha uzziba. The person who is interrogated, he will be surely punished. If Allah asks us, look, you know, subhanAllah, Allah is going to ask us from the time we became mature, balik, physically mature, from that time till our last breath. If Allah asks us, okay, you became balik at the age of 15, you died at the age of 65. So basically, all these years, 40 years of your life, I want an account of that. Every namaz, you've got no chance. You've got no chance of success. So the point here is we, we say Allah, show mercy, Allah, don't take hisab. فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِرًا We say, Allahumma hasibni hisabun yasira. Easy hisab is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just looks, okay, ciao. That's the way. And if he takes and he analyzes and he scrutinizes every single thing, that's it. Punishment, without a doubt. So, behisab mafirat. And the fourth one is dukhul jannat. When we say that Allah show mercy on us, we say Allah enter us because the ultimate place of mercy is jannat. So, my brothers, next time when we do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, Warahamna, you know, the problem we have is we, it's all lip service. Dua bolne ki cheez nahi hai, mangne ki cheez hai. In Urdu they say, like we will just say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wila atina hasana waqina azam anna wa rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. The Imam Sabi is doing dua, we are doing dua ourselves. Our mind is completely oblivious. That's why one of the etiquette of dua that you ask dua three times. Why? Because you can focus. You have to have that attention, dedication, that devotion, that focus. Towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, please give it to me. Please give it to me. So we are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like, you know, you know what it? Allah, if you want to give it, give it. If not, that's okay. That's our mentality. So we need to, when we say, Warhamna, we have to have these four things in our mind. And Rabbana la tuziqul. Allah, we never, this, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is in charge. He is in control of our hearts. He can easily twist it anytime. Do you know the word heart in Arabic is qalb? Qalb. Al-qalbu palatna, always moving. Then easily, we nobody has the control over his heart. Allah can subha- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change it, can alter it, turn it any time. So no one should be boasting of the iman, of the good deeds, of piety. Nobody has a right to do that. So second thing to safeguard our faith is doing this dua. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab. Third, with this, we need to stay in the company of the pious people, the righteous people. If a person stays with a musalli, a person who performs salah, then inshallah he will be musalli. But if he's not going to stay with those people, he's going to stay with the wrong kind of people, then he is going to be like them. That's why in the hadith, the Prophet wasallam says, Al-mar'u ala deeni khalilihi. A person is on the deen, the creed of his friend. The word khalil means an intimate friend, bosom friend. The Prophet ﷺ didn't say Allah dini abihi on the deen of his father. Because nowadays children don't listen to the father. Allah dini akhi, the deen of his brother, no. That's what one of the signs of Qiyamah is Adna Sadiqahu wa Aqsa Aba. Adna Sadiqahu. He makes his friend close and he gets his father far away. Any mashwara, any consultation, friend. The father says to the son, Beta, I want to get you married. You're 25 years old now, you need to get married, you're getting old. So he goes, okay, Abu, just uh, let me think about it. He immediately goes into the next room, he phones his friend, bro. My father's saying to me to get married, what do you think? No, brother, you still haven't got a job yet. You need to get a permanent job, you need to get a house, all these things. Until you don't do all this, you know, don't think about marriage. I'm not even married, I'm 30. Okay, thank you very much for the advice. He'll come back, Father, Jazakallah khair for your proposal, but I'm not ready yet. Inshallah, next time. Immediately listen to his friend. 
This was happening everywhere. This is a sign of Qiyamat. Let him see what kind of friends he keep. If you keep talking about friends, subhanallah, this incident come, I will just say it quickly, subhanallah, you know, we keep the wrong kind of friends. And that's going to be a danger for us, not only in this world, especially in the Akhirah. Especially in the Akhirah. At the time of the Prophet wasallam in Makkah Mukarramah, there was this leader of the Makkans, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id. He was one of the chief leaders of Makkah Mukarramah. So basically, every time he used to come back from a journey, he used to invite all his colleagues, the prominent people in Makkah Mukarramah. Once he invited the Prophet wasallam, and the Prophet wasallam said, okay, I'm going to come to your Dawud with the condition that you accept Iman. So the hospitality in the Arabs was very famous. He said, okay, to respect and honor the guest, he said, okay, he art articulated the kalima, he became Muslim, and he had the, the Prophet ﷺ had the meal, it was a happy occasion. In the morning, that was bounced off to the other leaders. So one of his friends, Ubay ibn Khalf, he came and he said, Uqba, has, have I heard it right that you have rejected and he left our religion and you have accepted the faith of Muhammad? Is that true? So he wanted to explain, but he said, no, no, I don't want to hear. If you want to stay within our circle, like nowadays, you know, your friend will say, if you want to stay with our gang, you know, son, we, we have to make sure that you do what we tell you to do. And if you want to be a Sufi, go to the masjid, that's it. You're not going to be with us. So the, pe the peer pressure gets a person to do everything. Allah, but that's the most dangerous thing. So what happened was, he, to please his friends, his friends said, look, if you don't go back, and in some of the tafsiri mentioned that he goes back and now he spits on the face of the Prophet ﷺ, he rejects the faith. Immediately Jibreel ﷺ comes down. The opening verses of the 19 Jews he brings. On that day, that Zalim, referring to Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id, he'll be biting his fingers out of sheer regret. And he say, I wish I made the Messenger وسلم, as my friend. I wish I didn't make this Ubay ibn Khalf my friend. Indeed, he has misguided me. After guidance came to me, Islam came to me. I was a Muslim. I was a believer. I had Iman. But this person came and he took that away. Shaitan at the 11th hour, he just deserts you. He just completely distanced himself. So what? The scholars, subhanallah, they say this, this is the backdrop. This is the shan nuzul to this. So even though these verses are specifically regarding Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id Ubay ibn Khal, but the scholars say, subhanallah, there will be thousands if not millions of Uqba and millions of Ubay ibn Khalf. Anybody who misguided somebody else, that will be the same scenario, the same situation for these people. If your friend, you are about to come to the masjid here and they stopped you, come on, let us go to the nightclub. So you went, you listen, Allahu Akbar, then these two people will be cursing each other. And they will say, Rabbana atihim di'faini mila adab wa la'anhum la'anan kabira. Allah give him double punishment. Allah say, well, li kullin di'f wa la For each one of you, double punishment. So there will be no way out. Wa qala al-ladhina attaba'u law anna lana karratan fa natabarra'a minhum kama tabarra'u minna. The people who followed the others, they will say, I wish you give us a chance to come into back this, to this world and we will surely distance ourselves from them. It's too late. So my brothers, my sisters, each and every one of us, we need to make sure that we stay steadfast on the deen. So what? We need to keep the right kind of friends. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. O you who believe, ittaqullah fi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Stay with the Righteous people. So Iman, if you want to keep our Iman intact, fear Allah. The word Taqwa comes from the word Wiqaya. Wiqaya means a barrier. So the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be to such a level that it becomes a barrier from committing haram. From committing those things which are makru tahrimi. Which are going to take us to haram things. From omitting, from leaving out faraiz. 
from leaving out wajibat, from leaving out sunnat muakkada. If a person does that much, he's got taqwa. That's the definition of taqwa. And if we want to keep the taqwa intact, we need to stay in the company of the pious people. How long should we stay in the company? Allama Alusi Rahmatullah says in his tafsir, Khalituhum hatta takunu mithlahum. Stay in the company until you become like them. So we can't just be coming once. We need to come five time prayers. We need to stay in the company of the scholars. So then we become like them. So because each one is connected. And if we don't stay in the company of the pious people, our taqwa will become weak. If taqwa becomes weak, our iman is weak. So all three are linked, interlinked. They are all three are linked. So iman will be strong if taqwa is strong. Taqwa will be strong if stay the company of the pious people. We have that connection. And if our piety, if our connection, association with the scholars is not there or pious people is not there, it's going to have effect on our taqwa. And taqwa is weak, it's going to have iman, uh, effect on our iman. That's why Shah Abdul Aziz Rahmatullah alayhi, subhanallah, he said these beautiful words, Man tahawana bin nawafil tahawana bin sunan. Beautiful words. He said those people who are lazy in carrying out the optional deeds, like there's a Mustahab did recommended. If he doesn't carry that out, then that will eventually tahawana be sunan. It will effect on the sunnats. It will have effect. So a person who doesn't perform the forecast of asr sunnah, you might be thinking there's no need. It's only sunnah the great muakkada. But many times, out of laziness, he doesn't perform. So slowly, slowly, gradually, it will have effect on his sunnah the muakkada, like the forecast of zuhr sunnah, the two rakas after this, the two rakas of fajr, the two rakas after maghrib. The two rakas after Isha, which are Sunnah Muakkada. So it'll have effect on that. And slowly then, Waman Tahawana bis Sunan Tahawana bil Faraiz. And when he is lazy in carrying out the Sunnah Muakkada, then it will start to have eventually effect on his Faraiz. He will even miss his Fajr Salah. And many of us, we miss our Fajr. Many of us, we miss our daily five time prayers. We have just become a person who comes for the Jummah. That's it. Allah save us all. We have to be five times Musalli. And then Waman Tahawana Bil Faraid Sulibal Ma'rifa and Allah forbid Allah forbid a person who's lazy in carrying out the faraiz, then what will happen is Sulibal Ma'rifa, the recognition of Allah goes away, the Iman goes away. Waman Sulibal Ma'rifa and when the Ma'rifa, the recognition when the Iman is gone, Fakad Waqa fil Kuf will fall in the ditch of Kufr. Allahu Akbar. So my brother, my sister, if we want to keep our faith strong, this day as I said, the fitna is so much. Shah Waliullah Muhaddis Dehli Rahmatullah Ali says, I'lam anna al fitna ala aqsam. Know that there are so many different types of fitna. In his kitab, Hujjatullah al Baliha, he said, I'lam anna al fitna ala aqsam. Minha fitna to Rajulifi nafsi, be ay yaksu a kalbuhu, fala yajidu ladza ta ta'ati wala ladza ta munajat. Allahu Akbar. So shocking. We are the living statistics. We are the figures of this. Prophecy, which has been mentioned here, the signs that fitna, one fitna is fitna within our own selves. We don't need to go anywhere else. Fitna to Rajuli fi nafsi within himself. What is that? That our hearts become hard. So it's become so hard. We don't have no, we don't get no happiness in carrying out the obedience of Allah. We don't want to come to the masjid. Sometimes we might be forced to come to the masjid. Our father told us, you know, we have to come for Jummah. People are going to say, you're not even a Muslim. What kind of person are you? Just coming for, as a ritual, as a customary thing, traditional thing. That's it. We don't have, we don't, you know, have that thing that we can raise our hands and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That sweetness of munajat, of connecting with Allah, one-to-one -one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is completely gone. We can sit down on the social media, we can watch a film, Netflix, Hollywood, Bollywood, Lollywood, whatever, Allahu Akbar. We'll be listening and we'll be watching this for all night. No problem. Do you know at the time Charlie needs to go to school, he's so tired because all night he was awake. So college, university, everybody's so, you know, half asleep. Because all night they were on their social media. Watching films, watching all these videos, watching all these YouTube clips. So, a person, subhanallah, for doing that munajat, few minutes in the masjid is too hard. Few minutes to raise the hands and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't have that. munajat. So my brothers, what we need to do is, we need to safeguard our iman. I mentioned, 
that each and every one of us, how do we safeguard our iman? Number one, we express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us so much. You know, we always were nagging. We always look at the negative things. We always look at those things we don't have. The Prophet sallallahu says that in terms of your dunya, look at those people who are below you. Millions of our brothers and sisters, they don't have the basic necessities. Food, drink, shelter, they don't even have that. Our own brothers and sisters around the world. Allah has given us everything. That's why in the hadith it says, Qad aflaha man aslama wa ruziqa kafafan wa qanna'ahu Allahu bima aata. That indeed that person is successful who has accepted Islam. Wa ruziqa kafafan. Allah has given him sufficient amount of sustenance just for that day. Qanna'a Allahu bima aata. Allah has made him divinely content of what Allah has given him. That contentment, we haven't got that contentment. Nowadays we think to ourselves that what is a good life? What's the definition of a good life? We think to ourselves, a definition of good life is health and wealth. No, no. There's so many people who are healthy and wealthy, but they want to commit suicide. So what does that tell us? The Quran is saying, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلَ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ وَمُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا That a person carries out good deeds, and is a believer, I will give him a good life. What does that mean, good life? What's the definition of a good life? It's not health and wealth. Number one, there's two things. He's content with what Allah has given him. He's happy. Number two, if any difficulty comes, he has made peace with his Allah, with his creator. That I'm happy. Allah, whatever you give. Look at Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. So for seven years, subhanallah, the calamity came down. All of his 14 children instantly were killed by that calamity. All his wealth destroyed. And he got this illness that also all on his body. Subhanallah. Even at that time, the dhikr was flowing from his tongue. This is what he called the divine contentment. So, what is hayat al tayyibah Good life. What defines a good life? That we are content. We're never content. We just want more and more and more. Then the hadith says, وَلَا يَمْلَعْ فَاهُ إِلَّا بِالتُّرَابِ Only thing which will make him content will be the soil in the grave. Then it's too late. So each and every one of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much. Let us look at the positive side of things. Let us look at those things which uh, will bring the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first thing is, we are expressing our gratitude. Number two is, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِي قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا Let us continue reciting this dua. Number three is, stay in the company of the pious people. Come into the masjid, stay in the company of the musalli. Stay with those people who are concerned about the akhirah. That's, so a person needs to keep that in mind. And if he does that, Alhamdulillah, he will be the successful one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act upon what has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa give us the tawfiq to follow the commandments of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The month of Ramadan is around the corner. Do you know, subhanallah, all this 11 months, we have malnourished our soul. Do you know, a person, individual, before I finish, do you know, every individual, every one of us, we are made of two things. The soul and the body. The body is the case. Is the external, is the tangible, is the physical. The soul is the intangible, the invisible, the spiritual. We all our, if there's a scar on our face, we'll spend thousands of pounds to take that away. We'll have the cosmetic surgery and everything else as well. So if a person has external illnesses and he doesn't look after his body, he might end up in hospital, worst case scenario in ICU. So what is going to happen that we have malnourished our soul so much that we haven't looked after it. There's so much illnesses, maladies, sickness, spiritual sicknesses in it. So we need to put it in the ICU or Ramadan. And we need to cleanse it. I hope you understand. Allah has given us that golden opportunity, the month of Ramadan. That's the ICU for our soul. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon so you get that taqwa back it's, it's so contaminated it's so polluted the spiritual maladies the sickness it's all are there we, we got that Ramadan so basically subhanallah the Shaban is a pre-wash and Ramadan will cleanse it all but we need to make sure that we 
fulfill the requirements of Ramadan and subhanallah then we will see that we are ready for the 11 months and ultimately we are ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah given us the opportunity. So let us value the month of Ramadan which is coming around the corner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to fulfill the requirements of Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam two months in advance he prayed Allahum barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban balligh Ramadan. He wanted Ramadan to come and two months in advance because he knew the value, he knew the significance, the virtues of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming, our attendance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our brothers who have organized this program. اللهم آمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا ورد عنا يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نرجوك اللهم إنا نرجوك ألا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا في هذا المسجد لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فروجت ولا كربا إلا نفست ولا دينا إلا أديت ولا سؤالا إلا أعطيت ولا دعاء إلا أجبت ولا تائبا إلا قبلت ولا عسيرا إلا يسرت ولا مبتلا إلا عافيت ولا مبتلا إلا عافيت ولا ضالا إلا هديت ولا فتى يريد الزواج إلا زوجت ولا ولدا إلا أصلحت ولا عقيما إلا وهبت ولا مريض إلا شف فيته وعافيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك ريضا ولنا فيها صلاة إلا أعنتنا يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين